Voice. I'm your host, Anita DeFrancesco. This is episode 19, and the topic this week is how do we navigate the web of jealousy? First of all, jealousy. Do you feel the hot, red, burning flames going through your body right now when you think of the word jealousy and the anger and the bitterness where it's mostly associated with romance? and you're being betrayed by your lover. And so all of a sudden, this emotion of jealousy becomes apparent throughout your somatic body. Whoa, let's take a breath on that one. It's your voice, folks. Yes, it is. And jealousy is a voice. Emotions are your voice. And all of these emotions, anger, sadness, jealousy, fear, shame, all of them, happiness, joy, you have a right to every one of your emotions and they need to be expressed. It is okay to have them. There is nothing wrong with feeling a certain way about something. So let's start with the jealousy thing. First of all, jealousy is an emotion of growth, which a lot of people don't recognize that to be that. Jealousy is a tool of growth, an act of the spirit. Be fueled by it. Use it to inspire and empower your life. Anita, that's my quote there. What I want to say about jealousy is it is an emotion to become better, to become to become inspired. You may be have you may have you may be have uh, envy, you may have envy toward people you work with that have better jobs than you or your friends that have nicer materialistic things than you do or better boyfriends or girlfriends and maybe they have a better body than you or they but the thing is, rather than be jealous of them, admire them and try to become something better in yourself. And that's what the emotion of jealousy is really there for. Why this emotion? To become better in yourself, to get inspired. Now, you know, keep in mind that I find sometimes that people are jealous of others' strengths. People, some people have a lot of discipline, a lot of courage. They go to the gym every day and then you, you meet up with your friends and they go, wow, how could you do that? And they sort of just want to bring you down or they want to put a lid on you because you're doing something that they wish they could do. And they can do it, but they need the motivation. They need to be fueled somehow, some way. But keeping in mind that you don't want to be have your energy zapped, you know, chewed up and spit out by your friends that become the vampires in your life. Either they put the lid on you or they subtly control you and send you these um, subliminal messages like you're not good because they have a low self-esteem or, or they're not feeling better about themselves or they just are too lazy or they just can't get motivated enough to do the things that you do. So they will zap your strength and you have to be careful of that if you're a strong, dedicated person to your soul and your spirit. And you have to understand that there needs to be healthy boundaries. So always look for the red flags because people are jealous in many ways. It's not just in romance and love and sex. It's not just that. We are jealous of our friends every day. There's something you're envious about every day that you walk by a store and, and, and you know the people who owned it and wow, you get jealous because you wish you could have had such a great business or whatever. So what I want to begin with here in the jealousy part is, is that it generally occurs in siblings when you're young, growing up, you know, competing for parental attention. If you were the firstborn or the baby born, who got more attention or the middle child? So reflect back and see, see if you can remember if you were the type that had to struggle to get that parental attention or were you the one who got the most attention? And if so, these things can shape and form they shape us, they shape and, and pattern us in our nervous system and they, they become who we are. So as we're growing, we are, we're, we're learning from the beginning and then we grow into that. Now the root causes, um, a lot of people, one thing that people can be envious of, of course, if you have money and then of course they're going to try to hang around you and borrow money, get money or get you to invest in their business. So that's another you need another boundary there because people that have money and or maybe have come from money or they you know they became wealthy enough and they're and successful enough to earn the money um you'll always find there's jealousy there 
The root causes of jealousy are abandonment, neglect, insecurity. It stems from insecurity. Again, you didn't get enough parental attention or enough attention from the teachers at school. So you became insecure. You became isolated, alone. You were on the outside. Um, low self-esteem. This can, this, can this can cause someone to get a low self-esteem. Now, there's what we call this high neuroticism that happens. And if you have this high type of neuroticism or feeling possessive of others or fear of abandonment, then this can also be one of the, um, the root causes of jealousy. Okay, so moving forward now. One thing I want to say about jealousy is that we're all hardwired. It's in all of us. We're all hardwired in jealousy. And um, it's a painful emotion, especially when it comes to love when it comes to romance, when it comes to being suspicious of your lover. But one thing I want to say about it is, is not to suppress it, but let it be a wake up call for you. Let's take a breath for a moment here. You're listening to It's Your Voice. I'm your host, Anita DeFrancesco, episode 19. How do we navigate the web of jealousy? So, when you have this beautiful emotion of jealousy or anything, anger, sadness, we don't want to suppress it, but look at it as a wake-up call. So again, getting back to what Eckhart Tolle says, we need the presence and awareness in order to grow. Now, I know it's not that easy to, to, to develop presence and awareness, but it, it's something that you will wake up to from every experience. In relationships, men feel a little more jealous about sexual infidelity, where women feel jealous about heartfelt uh, infidelity. So a woman would feel hurt if her lover is falling in love with someone else, and a man would feel more jealous if, in the sexual way, only because men are more performance-oriented in that way. and. Um, always seeking critique and whatnot in the, the sexual way. So that's where they would feel that or, you know, feel that type of jealousy. Dealing with it, how do you deal with it? It can compel you to obsessively monitor people's social networks, become a cyber stalker, uh, ruminate, ruminating in your head over and over about the person, the situation, um, or even behaving violently. And if that is the case, you're becoming more split and you need to seek out professional psychological help. But one thing with jealousy is that if you acknowledge it and admit to the jealousy, whatever it is, you may be, like I said, you're jealous of your best friend because they have nicer materialistic things than you or you're jealous of your friend. She got more college degrees than you. Um, acknowledge it and admit it and explore the undermining emotions that go with that. So what are the undermining emotions? Is it shame? Is it hiding? Is it isolation? It is not feeling good about yourself? And develop the internal coping skills. But you will need a coach and or a psychotherapist like myself to help you with this, to guide you and witness you throughout the process. Um, but keeping in mind, it is an emotion. Jealousy is an emotion of growth. And dealing with it, maybe just sit with your feelings for a moment, feel them fully, but don't wallow in them. Just sit there for a moment and breathe. Realize that you are not this emotion. It is just something that is coming through you. Admit to yourself, I am jealous, I am insecure, whatever it is that you're jealous of. Turn the focus from the outward to inward. So go into that silent place where the sensual lives in the silence, in the quietness of your body and become an observer of your thoughts. So start to look at yourself from the inside out. And just start to understand without doubt what your thoughts are. Put them there and look at them, accept them. Jealousy, again, is a tool of growth and it is your teacher. Examine it through. You can be start to write things down, journal, reflect on the past. Maybe finding a good friend to communicate these fears with and concerns with your partner or with a friend or with someone that is supportive of you emotionally. 
because this is a trigger and it can come and it can go. And if it's, if it's triggering you as time goes on, it's a pattern and it is connected to your nervous system. So you need to do the Dr. Willem Reich's work, Orgone Energy Therapy. And I do that, so you can reach out to me. And ask yourself the questions. Are the behaviors truly loving or just obsessive? Are you feeling that because you have a spiritual insufficiencies, you lack love, you didn't get enough attention somewhere along the line there? Is the jealousy unfounded? How do you get back on the track, right? How do you get back on that track? Now, if you're in a relationship with someone, reassure your partner that things are okay. Communicate with your partner. If you are going to betray them in any way, even if it isn't in the cheating way, it could be another way that you're betraying them, lying for whatever reason. But always reassuring your partner that the affection and love is there rather than push them aside or abuse them. And where there is jealousy, there is abuse. There is mental, emotional, verbal abuse that surrounds jealousy. So you have to work on your confidence. Both ways, both parties need to work on the confidence. Keeping in mind, if your partner is jealous of you, it is a sign of possessiveness and control. It is not a sign of love. Now, if you're in a significant, if you have a significant other and you're in an exclusive relationship or long-term marriage of some sort, you have a right to be jealousy. You have a right to jealousy and anger if your partner is betraying you in any way, whether it be cheating or other ways. Because if you're in this, there is a responsibility when it comes to exclusive love in a relationship. I know we're not perfect and no one is disciplined enough to love just one person, but there is a sense of responsibility that goes along with being responsible for each other's emotions. But then again, like I said, people become selfish and they don't care. They will throw you under the bus, your own partner will just because they're selfish or they have unmet needs and they have an emptiness and they don't care. And it means they're narcissistic or they're overdeveloped egos or they're cut from their, 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 their lower body and they're split. So keeping in mind, emotions of jealousy, anger, fear, sadness, shame are all okay. And if someone tells you or judges you or belittles you or condescends you and tells you you're crazy for having those emotions, they are the one that is crazy because having these emotions is very healthy to express them verbally, emotionally, and work them through. Otherwise, they will become a pattern in your body that can turn into a medical disease. So being neglected or pushed aside is a action of jealousy. Your partner may push you aside because they want to have an affair or something. They betray your trust. Now, jealousy comes in many forms. Again, it's not just romance. So to get jealous over stupid things is just that stupid. Your friend bought a better dress than you or your friend you know, makes $10 more an hour than you. These are stupid things to get jealous of. These are things to get inspired by it and try to find out and learn how you can actually grow into becoming the better you, accept you and your gifts. So recognizing and learning from others, using the emotion of jealousy to grow, to make yourself better. Remember, you all have gifts. And the first step to love is accepting yourself. And the first step to security and containment is accepting yourself. A lot of people have this attachment control with friends, with lovers, and that's where the jealousy, the insecurity comes because it lives in the middle of attachment and control. Overcoming the jealousy. Remember, is your relationship built on trust and love or what is your or respect? What is your relationship built on? We're getting back to the relationship jealousy again. Does your partner's behaviors reflect their words? Keeping that in mind, does your partner's behaviors reflect their words and if not you need to slow down the relationship and that gets brings us to attachment control acknowledging the jealousy will only open doors for you to learn 
and you no longer will let it shame you. So it is not an emotion of shame. It is an emotion of love to be explored, to be fueled by. People who develop secure attachments in their early years with their family, you know, their parents, their grandparents, generally, generally tend to be less jealous and dependent and they have higher self-esteem and less feelings of inadequacy. So the people who don't have such secure, atta secure attachments can be faced with maybe emptiness, um, you know, maybe the home atmosphere wasn't so great, repressive environment where caregivers were unreliable. So the role models um, were not there for them or they weren't demonstrating healthy uh, behavior, irregular behaviors toward the children. So there's a lot of this, 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 or parents expected too much of you. Maybe the, the brother was, became better than the other one and the parents compared you. And so you became belittled and you felt belittled and condescended. This would cause feelings of you to get jealous over anything in life uh, because you, you knew you had, you knew you had something, you knew you had yourself, but you didn't get the proper, the proper support in, in your upbringing. And that's the part of us that becomes frozen. We become frozen, we become detached and uh, we start to seek out others to help complete us. And this isn't the way to go. But I'm here to tell you, jealousy is uh, an emotion of growth. Maybe we start to fear the relationship. Say you're in the re a relationship with someone, you start to fear it's becoming less sacred. And so that's where jealousy could be. You're losing the divinity of the exclusivity of the beautiful relationship you built with that one person. And again, it all depends on the kind of relationship it was. Was it a just a casual sexual relationship, pleasuring relationship, um, or was it true love, or was were you planning to be going to the next step? So these are things to look at. Yeah. One thing that uh, maybe I'll, I'll just leave you on a few things now is accepting jealousy, understanding the self and the partner, cause, what's causing it, what is causing the jealousy. Remember, you have love, compassion, courage, vulnerability, knowing the truth, and giving freedom. So jealousy is an open door to freedom. It is an open door to help you to explore that reservoir inside of you and embolden your senses just become spiral into the moment of love. Relationships or anything in life where jealousy is, whether it's a romantic relationship or a relationship with your parents or a relationship with your friends, or a relationship with your, your schoolmates will not thrive if jealousy is there because that is the waiver. That is waving the thought of you jumping and moving ahead into what it is where you're supposed to be, becoming the full you. Accepting yourself as being fully alive and liberated. So relationships will not thrive if jealousy is there. I know this sounds tough, folks, to, to not have it, but if it's there in the very beginning of a love relationship, you need to cease that relationship. As far as with your friends, you need to become more supportive and communicative with each other that you can help each other to become better. Keeping that in mind, once we determine the source of jealousy, we, we, we learn how to master mindfulness mindfulness. So I will leave you on focusing on your strengths, which build you. Stop ruminating on your weaknesses. And when you are jealous, you are ruminating on your internal weakness. I'm going to ask you to focus on your strengths, which build you this week. Thank you for tuning in to It's Your Voice. This is episode 19, How Do We Navigate the Web of Jealousy? I have been your host, Anita DeFrancesco. This uh, title of this podcast, It's Your Voice, was born out of the DonnaGentileStory.com. And Live Free is another book of mine. They're both books on Amazon. You can get them. The, the DonnaGentileStory.com is a true crime book about a woman who was silenced. You'll have to read it. It's an excellent read. Thank you for tuning in.